Thank you, Mika. Thanks so much for having me. About a year ago, I said to myself, well, two years ago, I first came to PDF and I paid the hefty price tag. So I stalked several of the women um, and followed them over there to that section. The next year when I got a discount, thank you, Mika, um, I asked them all to be on my advisory board. And then, it, and that's a, that year I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be on that stage next year. I don't know how, but I'm gonna be on that stage next year, talking about something that we did that worked. Um, and so that's really exciting because I'm here to talk about that today. Peer-to-peer -peer organizing. I, I come from the nonprofit world. I have been wearing this t-shirt for 12 years. I have been training women to run for office for 12 years. We train close to 14,000 women with an organization called the White House Project, really on the forefront of women's leadership. But 14,000 is not enough if you've got 500,000 local elected seats across the country, and you've got term limits, and you've got folks who are staying in elected office for maybe four, eight, 12 years. So we, we needed to find a new way. And uh, I really was, was sort of welcomed into the PDF community and the Civic Hall community uh, in a really meaningful way that I can't thank Mika and Andrew enough for leveraging their networks, and I'm truly a product of uh, sort of civic plus tech actually becoming civic tech. So why do we need this? Why do we need more women leaders? Why do we need more women of color? Why do we need more diversity and leadership, equity and leadership? Where do you think we are, USA versus the world, in our women's representation at the highest levels? 41. 41, good, all right. 81. 81, boom, 97. Right? <laughs> so, and that number actually just keeps going back. When I first started doing this work, we were 72. Um, whoop, click, here we go. It's gonna take us 105 years if we continue to elect women to the US Senate and House at the rate we are electing them. That's not good. We've been stuck at about 20% for 20 years um, at our local offices. And you see some of the state legislatures, places like Alabama and the Deep South, where there's really few women. Places like Pennsylvania, which are always battle battleground states, have been going backwards in their number of women in, in their legislatures. I get to travel around the country. You go out into rural America, you go one sort of ring outside of urban communities, there are still 100% all-male city councils, 100% all-male school boards. We have a problem, right? Part of the problem in, in our work is that the solution space in training women to run for office isn't moving the needle. If we've been stuck at 20 some percent for 20 some odd years, we have got to try something different. I was an intern when I got my job at the White House Project. I was 24 when I started Vote Run Lead as a political program inside that organization. But it wasn't enough. And so the civic tech community, the idea that we could build these tools, do this faster, bigger, better, was really exciting to me. So the problem for the women is that we don't feel we're qualified, right? There's lots of reasons for that, that's another talk. We don't feel we're qualified, we're less ambitious to run for office, um, and to even consider it. And then you have a whole group of other people who aren't even considering politics as a place to make change. So the ones that are ambitious for it aren't finding a community for themselves, and the others that might be really fantastic public servants aren't even considering politics. So what have we been doing? We've been working on the supply side. We have been setting up curriculum and hosting conferences and you know, if we build it, they will come. Nope, this is a lot of organizations working in the women's political space. We're, doing a lot of res we're creating a lot of resources. You need a curriculum on how to run for office? Call me, I'll send you seven, right? But on the demand side, on recruiting at a really large scale, on it being the mouth of the movement, trying to reach new people to really put a dent in that 500,000, this is how many of us are really working on the demand side. We lost NOI about a year ago, one of the organizations that I took a lot of learnings from uh, in their recruitment of actually how do you invite, ask, and tap diverse leaders to consider public office. So we have a problem, right? We didn't know what we were doing. We, um, you know, it was, a, it was an idea, but we knew some basics, right? Historically, research tells us, particularly for women in the state legislatures, that if you ask a woman to run, if you say, I think you would be fantastic for the school board, have you ever considered it? She might actually have that ambition. There was this quiet sort of dormant ambition, right? So it was a top-down approach. How do we get elected officials, party chairmen, other big dogs to actually look down at folks and say, okay, you're ready, right? I, I've picked you. We didn't like that model. Peer-to-peer -peer is changing how we shop, how we have reviews, we trust our friends on Facebook more than we trust you know, the New York Times in giving us information. So we wanted to try out and test peer-to-peer. -peer. I also truly believe that the talent pool of women is there. The talent pool of women is there. We have no problem, we just have to go out, tap, invite, and get them. 
So our hypothesis is, can peer-to-peer -peer be as effective in fueling ambition and actually creating that demand? We went after two types of women. Women who, also wearing the t-shirt, okay, sort of untapped, right? That ambitious woman, her, her, or her ambition is laying dormant. Um, how do we get to her? And then how do we get to those women who went from that zero to one, where they, they were advocates, activists, but they would never consider running for public office? Like, you have to be crazy. How many women here would consider running for public office? Raise your hand. Okay, 10, 12, right? There's probably a couple hundred of us in this room. Um, and so those are, the, those are the sort of campaign messages that we worked with. Um, that's how we decided to go about this campaign. And we tanked. <laughs> we totally tanked. First round, we raised a lot of money. Didn't get it for the second round, right? After that, I was like, oh, okay. So we got this meme generator. That shit was spinning, wasn't even working. I, you know, asking the user to, you know, go in, create a meme, find a woman, send it to her. None of that, it didn't work. It didn't work, right? Big fail. Left that tech partner and actually had a real epiphany that I wasn't looking for tech tools. I wasn't looking for tech features. I was looking for tech talent. And that was the real difference in sort of how Vote Run Lead really made a turn in this campaign. And I found tech talent. I found her through the Tech Lady Mafia, actually. She's also wearing this t-shirt, this if you want to talk to her. Um, our chief product officer, Karen Shulkoff. And she ended up finding a tech partner for us in our new, uh, in our new de with our new developers. How do we do this as a partnership? How do we do this the right way? We do this the right way by tapping into culture. Right? What is inspiring women to lead? Going to where women are instead of asking them to come to us. So we saw this floating around, I don't know if anybody saw this, around October, early November last year, it was the Elle magazine um, ads running on, they were everywhere, they were Facebook, everywhere. And our community really popped up. It was Angelina Jolie at the UN, you took all the men out of the room, and she was sitting in a room full of chairs. Right? Hillary Clinton in the Situation Room, you took the men out of the room, and it was a single woman in a room full of chairs. And we all said to ourselves, that's the way our government looks in the United States of America, right? So how, we knew we had the solution. Their solution was a very, so magazine of them. I love them, but it was like, tweet more women, a picture of you and your girl squad. I was like, that's not going to do anything, you know? <laughs> so, we, you know, we actually, we reached out to them. We didn't, you know, we got a lovely email back, but they weren't going to work with us. So we decided to sort of take it on our own. And this is what we came up with, right? That's the Los Angeles City Council in 2016. That's the Los Angeles City Council in 2016. One woman on it, right? This is our home state here in New York. How adorable is she, by the way, right? So we had a problem. And we knew this imagery was really powerful. We ran ads, we localized these ads, and instead of creating a meme generator so that when you clicked on these awesome pictures, you actually went to a really beautiful, clean microsite with a single ask. And we were no longer asking you to invite a woman to run for office. We were asking you to help us fill this room, right? There are talented women out there who should be sitting in these seats, and you know them. And if you were on our email list, it was really easy to do it. Your, your name and address actually popped up automatically. And um, it, was, it was successful. I'll tell you more about that. We actually decided last minute to do the self-nominate button. Research says as well that women won't self-nominate, but we were like, hey, let's throw it up, right? Really clean, single ask, lots of nice follow-through, easy daisy chain of emails to make sure that you knew what you were getting into with Vote Run Lead. Used a heat map, required people to put their zip code in. LA was pissed off, right? We went out to LA. We actually did an event in Nation Builder, which was awesome. Dallas, Texas, tons of women in Dallas, Texas looking to run. We, that's us in Philadelphia doing a salon. So not only did you get connected to Vote Run Lead's community, which is a hyper-diverse community of low-income women, women of color, rural women who have taken this plunge and who are willing to talk about their experiences, but you got these online classes and courses, and we came to you. We aimed for 500 nominations. We got it in 10 days. We were like, oh, shit, we need more money. Um, Eileen Fisher actually doubled down and gave us some money to do more salons. We ended up with over 1,600 nominations. 40% of those nominations throughout the campaign are women who self-nominated. So we are waiting to be asked, even if we have to ask ourselves. <laughs> this is Dr. Katie Baker. She saw one of the Facebook ads and she said, that's me, right? She's 30 years old, she's got a PhD. She lives in uh, rural Tennessee, Johnson City. Uh, Eastern Tennessee, Appalachia, um, and this is her county commission. 
It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Right? Can you even find her in the picture? I don't think so. so <laughs> she actually has amazing stories about how men are constantly, you know, op taking out the chair for her and all of this subtle sexism that's just, it's amazing. She's a rock star. So in her county, um, her commission that you just saw, these guys decided that they wanted to have natural marriage between a man and a woman defined at the county level. Totally reasonable. <laughs> and <laughs> so her community is outraged, right? They're, the pictures of that event are they're sort of shutting down the county commission. They're not even letting them vote on it. It never actually even passes. Katie reaches out. She sees herself on Facebook in these images, in that LA City Council image. She signs up for her email address. She gets our emails. She starts nominating the crap out of her town. And she reaches out and says, will you come to Eastern Tennessee? I said, yes, I will. Two planes and an hour and 15 minute car drive later, stop at the overpass to take a picture of the beautiful mountains. Katie and I are in a room, uh, one of our fill the room salons with 22 women in rural Tennessee. And it really did have that sort of network effect, that peer to peer effect. Two of the women are running for office. You see them up there. Uh, Andrea actually uh, then connected us to um, Michelle, who is a current Kingsport City Council member, did a blog post about her. Nashville, Tennessee became the seventh location for our upcoming event uh, next Saturday. We were only going to do six cities. Tennessee was like, no, you're doing seven, mm -hmm. right? And a rural de delegation is actually going to dare to lead. They've also held their own events. And there's a different kind of network in that community, a different kind of network that knows that they are qualified to run for office. Right? So what did we learn? Peer-to-peer -peer works. The talent pool is there. We do know talented women. They will accept the challenge. They are waiting for you to ask them. That self-nomination at about 40% was one of the most fantastic findings out of the entire campaign. Dormant ambition can be nurtured and should be nurtured. I'm so pleased to follow the earlier speaker. I think Mika did a really nice job of, of tuning that up. But gender and culture are still really strong. Uh, it was really funny. Uh, in Civic Hall, a couple of the women would come up to me and say, well, who should I nominate? What is she like? What will she get out of this? Will her name be public? The men were like, Matt Stempick at Microsoft was like, yeah, okay, I got four, four people for you, right? <laughs> so we even filter ourselves. Um, and it's not a funnel. It's an ecosystem, right? It's not a step-by-step -step linear process of you ask her, she will run. There's a lot that goes into sort of making sure that someone feels qualified, feels confident, knows how to talk about themselves. And that's the, the supply side work that we've been doing for a dozen or so years. And you've really got to do the in real life with your tech. They go hand in hand. If I didn't fly out to uh, Eastern Tennessee, it wouldn't have happened, right? So everybody's got to take out their cell phones and you've got to think of one woman in your network and she'll get a free pass to come on Saturday the 18th if she's in one of our seven cities. And if not, she'll get a free pass to come online where we have a unique program, specifically how to run for office and online experience. Folks like Facebook are doing uh, a session on how to campaign and use digital organizing tools. Invite.voterunlead.org. And let's try to reach another 500 women today. Thank you.